something I've been working on and, and maybe it would, it would help you. And um, full, you know, interests of being vulnerable and uh, practicing when I'm preaching, it's important to recognize that nobody's perfect. Everyone has a bad day. And as I've expressed numerous times in Facebook lives and, and other forms, uh, 2020, like for so many people has been tremendously challenging for me with, whether it be again, the aging parents, personal relationship, uh, challenges, uh, you know, raising a, a, a son that's 13 years old, great kid, but it, that comes with, uh, with challenges. And so something that I've been doing, knowing that I have a launch for my signature leadership program coming up in mid November, I've really been reflecting on what, what do I need to do to continue to show up and be productive and get out of this funk that I've been feeling that just a lot of fatigue, um, I've never experienced anxiety before. I've never, never thought about it actually, but I can find myself just over the last few weeks in particular, this, this, this welling up of anxiety, this tightness in my chest. And, and again, I've, I've never felt that before. I've actually kind of prided myself on my ability to handle stress well, whether it be in the moment or in general. And, but there've been some real personal challenges I've been facing. And so I've been really trying to unpack that, but while I'm unpacking is figuring out what are the options, what are the solutions to dealing with this growing sense of angst. And, and I now, I, I really understand it a lot better than I used to in terms of this visceral tension and this, again, this, this tightness, I can, you know, start to feel it now. So I've been trying to, or I, never mind trying to, I have been implementing a lot more structure, um, to, to deal with anxiety and stress. And, and a lot of it comes down to the, the stress being a lack of control or not having a locus of control. So in other words, there are circumstances that are really outside the realm of, of what you're, you're used to dealing with and able to deal with. So we call that locus of control. And an example would be like with kids. Um, one of the reasons they get so upset about things is because they don't have a sense of control over their decisions, their outcomes, and all of those other things. So the old parent trick is if give your kid two options, either one being good, but as long as they have a role to play or they, they have a part to play in that decision, that gives them a locus of control. So with that is is really where i'm trying to hit at and so i want to encourage you to do a couple things maybe this week um, and super simple is start to implement some sort of a routine in the morning or during your day whatever that looks like and, and what you're doing is, is incrementally you're you're restoring or you're going back to a locus of control so for me what i'm doing is I am going back into a strong structure that I have implemented for years. And ironically in 2020, I went away from, and it's that exact structure that actually gave me strength and gave me productivity and gave me a sense of moving forward and, and all of those things. But in 2020, I, I don't know if you, if you're the same, but when things are blown up, the very things that you need to deal with anxiety and uncertainty and, and be productive and, and be happy. Those things kind of fall by the wayside. So I was meditating regularly. I had a strong structure in the morning. I was managing my sleep really well. Well, guess what? In 2020, not just because of COVID, but a whole bunch of reasons, boom, blown out of the water. So just literally this week, I am back on that structure train. And I can tell you even just early on in this week, adding that structure back that I'm so familiar with and I'm so comfortable with allows me to be productive, which helps me psychologically and emotionally, but it gives me back that locus of control. And that locus of control is what we're lacking during COVID. That's what we're lacking during this pandemic. It's what we were lacking over 2020. So doing whatever you can. And, and I would suggest to you making small changes, incremental changes with regard to what that looks like. Um, we're not asking you to, to, to sweep everything off the, uh, off the table in terms of routine and structure and all those other things and, and start anew, uh, but start small, start small. So for me, for example, I have the benefit, I'm blessed that I have some flexibility in my day. Now, the downside of that is I have a lot of flexibility in my day. So 
what I found myself during COVID doing was using that flexibility to procrastinate, using that flexibility to um, not be as productive, using that um, flexibility to, to be just stewing in my own angst, essentially. So what I'm doing now is, is I have one hour in the morning dedicated 100. So I'll, you know, if I have my son Hunter, I'll drop him off at school. I'll head to a coffee shop now that now they know which ones are open and I will spend one hour on my own personal development. So it's this morning, for example, I posted on Instagram, I bought Jay Shetty's book, think like a monk. And before I do anything, it's me, it's my time. And maybe you don't have an hour, maybe you have 15 minutes, maybe you have 30 minutes, whatever that looks like. But that is one hour for me. I set my, uh, I have a app on here called off time that shuts off all notifications. It doesn't beep. It doesn't light up. It doesn't do anything like that. And it's set for one hour and I sit and I read for one hour. And then I have another hour for business. So as I said, I'm launching my, my signature leadership course, uh, middle of November. So got webinar work to do. I've got marketing, Facebook ads, all sorts of things going on there. So I dedicate one hour to that. I have one hour for another business that I have teaching emergency response and search and rescue. So I have an hour to dedicate to that. And I make sure that there are no distractions. And literally within that, that period of time, I'm expressing gratitude. So I'm working on my gratitude journal. I'm planning. So I'm doing my to-do list. All of these things are, are really bringing my, my locus of control back to me. And it is also very, very important that when I start to feel the sense of angst, which I'm feeling, I've never felt it before, to be honest, I am able to now implement what we talked about and we have talked about numerous times called box breathing. You breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for four seconds, you exhale for four seconds, and then you wait for four seconds. And I can tell you, it has taken me even four, five, 10 times of four, you know, you know the, of the box breathing cycles to bring my heart rate down, but it works. It really, really does. Now I'm experimenting with five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, and five seconds. And I'm, I'm really learning to work through the angst. I'm working through the fear. I'm working through the stress, just like all of you are, are going through these days, but just recognizing that there is, there are very specific things you can do to bring yourself out of that anxiety. And one of the things, again, I'll just review and implore you do something this week that provide structure, that sense of locus of that, that locus of control, that sense of control. And as I said, for me, it's helping a lot. And it's something that ironically I went away from during COVID and just started the slippery slope. And I wasn't myself. I was stressed out. I was uh, irritable. I was all of the things and I wasn't the best version of myself, to be honest. And this week I'm tired of it. I'm going back to the best version of myself. And uh, one of the first things I'm doing is creating some sort of structure in my day, which will in turn translate to structure in my life and uh, restoring a sense of control. So I would encourage you, I've done not directly related, but you know, a lot of difficult conversations that we're having with, with friends and family and coworkers. And so I put together a guide, as some of you may know, um, on how to open up a difficult conversation. So the link is in the description there. Go ahead, download that. It's a PDF. It's free. And uh, it will actually give you some templates and some real good tools that will um, enable you to have some of those difficult conversations. And one of the things I did not put in the guide is box breathing before you go in to have any of those kinds of difficult conversations. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on, on this? Are, are, is there some sort of a structure or routine that you have, or is there something that you've gone away from that maybe you should, I, I want, I want to know that. And people in the community want to know that because we're all in this together. And I'm here to tell you, nobody's effing perfect. All right. Nobody's perfect. We're, we're struggling. We are absolutely struggling. So instead of kind of going inwards and, and, and just worrying about ourselves. One of the best things you can do is, is be of service and offer up help to other people. So 
go ahead and, and uh, leave that in the comments if you want. DM me, like send me a personal message if there's some sort of piece of structure that you're working on um, or that you could implement or anything like that. Any thoughts around that? I, I would love that and so would the community. Thanks for watching.